يا عائشة أخبرين بأعجب ما رأيت من رسول الله Tell us the most wondrous thing that you saw from the Messenger of Allah. And she said, What what thing that he did wasn't wondrous. He came one night to me and he entered into the, the bed with me. Hatta Messa Jilduhu Jildi. I could feel his flesh up against my flesh. فَقَالَ يَا إِبْنَةَ أَبِي بَكَرْ ذَرِينِي أَتَعَبَّدُ لِرَبِّي Oh, daughter of Abu Bakr, leave me to go and pray to my Lord. And she said, Wallahi, إِنِّي أُحِبُّ قُرْبَكَ يَا رَسُولُ اللَّهِ I love to be close to you. لَكِنْ أُوْثِرُ هَوَاك But I prefer what you prefer. فَقَامَ he got up to the place, the water container, and he did wudu. And it was a light wudu. So he began to cry until the tears covered his chest. And he continued like that until Bilal came and he told him the prayers come in. In other words, Fajr. So Aisha said, Ya Rasulullah, ma yubkik, ma yubkik, wa qad ghafar Allahu laka ma taqaddama min dhambika wa ma ta'akhara. What is making you cry when, the prophet, when your sins or anything you've done and his sins are doing a virtuous thing when a more virtuous thing could be done? When all your sins have been forgiven, what passed and what is to come? And the Prophet ﷺ said, Awram akun abdan shakura. Should I not be a grateful slave? Should I not be a grateful slave? In the hadith, in a similar hadith in Al Bukhari, Hatta tawarramat qadama. Sa'alathu. Fakala awram akun abdan shakura. He stood until his feet had the edema. From, from, from standing so long. And he said, shouldn't I be a grateful slave? Gratitude. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَانَ مَرِيضًا أَوْ عَلَى سَفْرًا فَعِدَّةٌ مِنَ أَيَّامَ الْأُخْرَ يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمْ الْعُسْرَ Allah wants ease for you in this fasting. He doesn't want hardship for you. مَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْكَ الْقُرَانَ لِتَشْقَى He didn't reveal this Quran for you to be miserable. He wants ease for you. وَلِتُكْمِلُ الْعِدَّةَ وَلِتُكَبِّرُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ In order for you to complete this fasting, in order for you to, to elevate your Lord, to declare His greatness, and in order for you to be grateful. Gratitude. This is the secret of Ramadan. This is the time to be reminded. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُولُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَاشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ Oh, you who believe, eat of the good things of Allah, but show gratitude for those things. If you are truly worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, one of the most blessed things that we have in this world is food. It brings us together. It nourishes our bodies. It sustains us. And then the pleasure of food itself. This is a great gift. Allah could have made brackish water that we had to drink. He could have given us rocks that we had to crush as our nutrition. But He gave us cherries and grapes and figs. He gave us very varieties of meats. He gave us all of the blessings that the earth brings forth. What, is, what does Allah ask us? Shukr. اعملوا آل داود شكرا وقليل من عبادي الشكور Work, do things out of gratitude. O oh, Al Dawood, and how few of my servants are always grateful. Always grateful. أولم أكون عبدا شكورا This is, he didn't say أولم أكون عبدا شاكرا Shouldn't I be a grateful servant? Shakir, you can be shakir one time or another time. When you're shakur, it's called sigha mubalagha. 
It's the form of hyperbole. It means you're always grateful. Our Prophet ﷺ was always in a state of gratitude. This was his, his whole experience of the world was gratitude. One of the worst things about modern times is ingratitude is cultivated in people. They're, they're ungrateful for the police, they're ungrateful for government, they're ungrateful for their educations, they're ungrateful for everything. People just complain all the time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَأَذَّنَا رَبُّكُمْ لَإِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَإِنْ كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِ الشديد. Your Lord has declared, if you're grateful, I will increase you in blessings to be grateful for. But if you are an ingrate, if you lack gratitude, in fact, if you show ingratitude, I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. I will give you more reasons to be ungrateful. This is a metaphysical equation. Gratitude equals increase in blessings. Ingratitude equals decrease in blessings. This is a qaida, it's a law. It's a metaphysical law that's as true as the Newtonian physics that you learned in high school. If you're ungrateful, then Allah will give you more to be ungrateful about, more to whine about. You think it's bad now? You have no idea how bad it can get. Read history to know how bad it can get. You think Syria is bad? Read about the Mongol invasion. They didn't have any place to flee to. You, th you think the Muslims are having tribulation in America? Read about Nazi Germany and what happened to the Jews. We have to be grateful because if we're ungrateful and always complaining, Allah is going to give you more to complain about. I was in one of the Gulf states and somebody was complaining about the price of gasoline, the taxi driver, 25 cents at the time. <laughs> now it's a lot higher. Why? Because they keep complaining. Go ahead, complain all you want. Because if you love to complain, Allah will give you plenty to complain about. But if you want to show gratitude, Allah will give you plenty to show gratitude about. They did a study at Davis. It's called the gratitude study for depressed people. They had them write down every day, every morning, 10 things they were grateful for. Over a period of a month, people's depression started being lifted. If you start counting the blessings of Allah, you'll never come to an end. And you can count blessings like just eyelashes. The people don't have eyelashes. They fall out. The eyelashes are a wonderful blessing. Or some people have dry eyes. So if you have moisture in your eyes, what a blessing. If you have teeth, what a blessing. If you don't have teeth, if you have dentures, what a blessing. There's people that don't have dentures. If you lose one arm, what a blessing. You didn't lose both arms. If you lose both arms, what a blessing. Now they have prosthetic devices that enable you to do things. Ibn Abbas said, in every tribulation in dunya, there are three blessings hidden that you have to recognize. The first is that it could have been worse. The second is that it's in your dunya and not in your deen. And the third, in your worldly affairs and not in your religious affairs. And the third, it's in this world and not in the next. 